Hi everyone and welcome to the second video in my How to Colour Food series. In the first video we looked at how to colour fruits and there'll also be a third video after this in the playlist which is going to be how to colour your comfort foods, so things like breads, pastries, cakes and sweets. Now in this video today we're concentrating on nine different vegetables and just before we get into it I will mention again as I did in the last video that I'm not a professional colourist, I'm not even a particularly brilliant colourist at all, this is just how I colour them that's the quickest and easiest way and it still looks pretty effective. Okay, so we'll get straight into it. The first vegetable that I've put on this sheet, which is downloadable by the way for free, just check the description. Uh, the first vegetable is the eggplant, as you call it in America. Over here in Britain, we call it the aubergine. I'm not sure which one is correct or if they both are, you'll have to let me know in the comments. But the Prismacolor suggestions that I've put on this practice sheet are black grape, black cherry, dark purple and white. Now you might notice as we go through these vegetables that I am using white quite a lot for the highlights just because it's a bit more creamier and smoother than using a white gel pen like we did with the fruits. Uh, you can still use a white gel pen if you like, it's just I prefer to use the white pencil on these particular ones. Okay, so usually we always start off with the darkest colour, but I'm going to start with the lightest colour this time because we need to plot out where we're going to leave this highlight for the white. So the dark, uh, sorry, the lightest colour on this list, obviously apart from the white, is the dark purple. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a sort of backwards L curve that runs along the aubergine and just ends up as a nice sort of soft bubble like this. So this is going to be where our white highlight will be and you can make that as thick or as narrow as you like. You can always adjust that anyway. Prismacolors are very good at being manipulated uh, with, with the with next colour so you can always use your white to expand that area or you can use your dark purple to narrow that area. But we're going to end up with something a little bit like that. So now we know that we have to leave that area for the very end to blend our white into. And when we've done that, we're just going to go around that shape and just feather some colour in for the next colour to blend into. So it leaves a nice soft base to blend. Now the next darkest colour is the black cherry. And again, we're just going to blend on top of and around the dark purple that we've just put down. So we are going on top of that dark purple on the very edge and then around again just feathering some colour on for the next one to blend into. And that is the black grape. So we can finish off the rest of the left hand side of this aubergine with the black grape. So aubergines are quite tricky because they are a very, very dark vegetable, but they aren't black. They're sort of purplish, reddish, bluish, uh, depends sort of who's looking at it really, but they are not black. So you do have to try and get that dimension in there. So we're going just around this edge with the black grape any little bits that you've left. So by now you should have something that is completely coloured apart from the top and the white highlight. Now what we do is we take our white pencil, mine is tiny so I'm hoping and praying that it's not going to run out or snap during this video because I don't have another one. Um, so we take our white, we go over the highlight that we left in and already this will start to soften the edge with that dark purple colour. You can just blow or brush any sort of debris, any dust off there. And basically just play with it until you're happy. So really I've put this L, backwards L, a little bit too far up from the curve of the bottom of the aubergine for my liking. But you can always rectify that just by pushing the white further into the dark purple and it will manipulate that and it should come down a little bit more towards where you wanted it. So obviously I'm doing this quite quickly for time reasons, but you'll take a bit more time to get it right. 
But what we just want to do is give the effect of that shine on the aubergine and still have that, instead of it being stark white, we've got like a very light purple so that we can see that it isn't actually black with a white highlight. It does have some colour to it. So what you can then do with your dark purple is go back in and sort of refine the highlight if you wanted to. Make sure it's all burnished together. And then if you need to, back in with that white to cream it so that it doesn't look so harsh. And once you've done that, you'll have something that looks a little bit like that. And as I say, if, it, if you're not happy with it, you can just mess around with it until you are. So if I was to do this again, I would probably move that backwards L shape, just the curve slightly more towards the bottom of the aubergine, uh, just to go with the contour. You should always go with the contour of the line. But there we go. So you can also, if you wanted to, to brighten it up slightly, is to put some white gel pen on top. You can just press on it like that, and if it leaves sort of finger marks, just rub it very, very slightly like that, and that will brighten up the highlight just a little bit. So as for the top of the aubergine, it's just greens. I mean, we've always coloured leaves on these tutorials that I do, and I think we've sort of got every single colour palette that we can ever imagine for, <laughs> for leaves now. So um, just colour that in whatever green you think matches up to the eggplant. I would probably suggest... Uh, maybe a kelp green for that one uh, but we are, we're not going to concentrate on the leaves and things we're just going to concentrate on the actual fruits themselves okay so next up is the tomato now for this one I've said try scarlet lake poppy red cadmium orange hue and white again so I'll just pull these from the pencil case here so scarlet lake and poppy red which is quite an orangey red cadmium orange hue and we've already got our white out from earlier so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in with the darkest color first which is the scarlet lake and we're going to make a backward c shape very similar to how we did on the aubergine but more rounded like a c uh, in the bottom right hand side of the tomato but we're not going to go right up to the edge of the line we're going to leave a little gap so make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp and I'll just do the outline of the C, or the, well, it's kind of a C, it's a backwards curve anyway, just so that you can see that little space that we're leaving between the, uh, the red and the line. And that little space, we are going to fill it in with one of the lighter colours, but what that does is it gives it the roundness. It doesn't look as if it stops at the line, it gives it that rounded look. So once you've done your C with the Scarlet Lake, your backwards C, I'm just making sure that you've left a little bit of that layer, that very light, light feathery layer uh, for the next colour to blend into, as we always do. You can go in with your Poppy Red. And what you can do is you can bring that C right up to the line now. You don't have to leave a gap all the way around and you can do exactly the same on the other side. So you'll have something that looks a little like that. And again, we're filling in the colour going over on top of and also outwards with the poppy red. And we're, we're still colouring in this sort of curve because we want our highlight to be in the top left hand corner. So when you've got it to that sort of stage and you're happy with how it's blended, we'll move on to our cadmium orange hue and exactly the same thing around and also the very edge right up to the line and you should be left with something that's a little bit of a sort of oval, a circular sort of oval white area in the top left hand side. Now also with this cadmium orange hue we're going to fill in that little gap that we left in the first place. As I say that will give it the look of 
roundness and three dimension. Now we have that white bit there, but we're not gonna leave it like that. We're going to take our white, but remember to always clean off. You can either do it on a piece of paper, just do it on the corner of here, or you can um, just rub it with your finger. But whatever you do, just make sure there's no residue of the last color that was used. So we're just going to do exactly the same as we did on the aubergine, moving in little circles this time, just to pull that cadmium orange hue into the white space but it's still left a really sort of clear highlight and just play with it a little bit until there's no harsh lines of any color left there and you'll get a really nice very nice shine on the on the edge of the of the tomato now if you feel that the shine is is gone too far or if it's still too harsh don't worry about it just come back in with your cadmium orange hue push it back to where it should be and you can just play around with the white and the orange until you're happy. So that'll do for me I think and this little bit that we did filling in the uh, gap at the start if you think again that that's just a bit too harsh you can bring back that scarlet lake and blend it a little bit further with that cadmium orange hue it's just to give the impression that it's not a flat object which is basically the aim of what i'm trying to do here is to show you how to color foods in a slightly realistic way so when you're happy with how that looks that is how to do a tomato Right, next up is broccoli. Now for this one, I have advised that we use kelp green, olive green, apple green, and pale sage. So none of these color combos go over four colors because obviously, um, that's not including the white by the way, because obviously foods in coloring books, as I said in the last video, are not big, huge pieces of food. They're normally in a basket, on a table, etc. So you don't really have a lot of room to use 10 different colors to blend. So kelp green, just pull that now. And we've got olive green. Where are you? I'm sure my colours just move around on their own. <laughs> olive green, apple green and pale sage. So pale sage is obviously a really, really light green. So that's going to be our lightest. So kelp green, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a side of each floret of broccoli. We're going to choose one side of it to be the darkest side, the side that's in shadow. And I'm just going to choose sort of this top left hand side to be the darkest side. It's totally up to you how you do it. We could even, we could do the top, the, uh, sorry, the bottom right hand side. It really, really doesn't matter. Let's do the, let's do the bottom right hand side because we've got this sort of bushy uh, line work there and that looks like it might be in shadow. So, okay, kelp green, darkest colour. We're just going to circle around this right hand side of each floret with the kelp green. And this is our darkest colour. This is our shadowed part of the broccoli and it really is as simple as that there's no sort of technical aspects to my coloring whatsoever which is probably why they don't turn out as amazing as a lot of other colorists um, but they're also very very quick and very easy to learn um, which is sort of what I pride myself on so no skill whatsoever required and I really would love to know in the comments if you have found my tutorials easy to work with um, and if you like them and if there's obviously anything else that you'd like me to try and tutorial for. Um, a lot of people are asking for skin. Now I use Helen Elliston's skin tone tutorial for all of my skin tones um, just purely because I, I can't do it myself. I haven't had that much practice. Um, but I will, I will keep trying to practice so I can come up with an easy tutorial for you guys. Okay, so once you've left that blurred edge like we always do, you move on to your next colour, which is the olive green. So obviously don't 
go too far into the floret otherwise you're not going to have enough room for the rest of the colours and we do need that room. So it really is just the slightest layer and always remembering to sort of factor in how many colours you're going to need to put down and leave space accordingly. Okay, next colour is the apple green and by this time there should just be a slight bit left on each floret for the pale sage to come into. Now you don't even have to put the pale sage down if you don't want to, you could leave the very last crescent of each floret in white and that would just give you a lovely glowy look um, and that, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever but if you do like to colour in sort of every single bit and you don't really like leaving white the pale sage is the next best thing so everywhere that's left on the floret we are just going in and it's it is basically like using a white but it's like a green a greenish white so it is a very very light blended color and it just gives it that nice smoothness so that is basically how to do the head of a broccoli. Now for the uh, the stalk, it really is super, super simple. So get your, let's get the second to darkest colour, which is the olive green. And these lines here, we're just going to follow those down. Make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil. Follow those lines sort of halfway, three quarters of the way down. Then we're using our apple green to just, just put a layer over it really. There's no, uh, no rhyme or reason. And then the pale sage, the last colour, to just blend it all in. Super, super simple. Now I'll just go in with the uh, olive green again and just those leaves that are sort of sticking out of the stalk, just block colour those. And there we go, how to colour broccoli. Now next up I'm going to have to move my sheet which is taped to the desk so just bear with me one second. Okay so let's move it up for the next three. So we have as you can see potatoes, onions and potted peas. So let's get started with the potatoes. So for this you'll need ginger root, sienna brown and sand. Now obviously as I mentioned in the last video you can use any kind of coloured pencil that you like and you just have to sort of convert these colours into your pencil brand. I do have conversion charts into Prismacolor and several other different conversion charts which you can find on the charts section of my website colourwithclaire.com. But for this one Prismacolors we need ginger root so I'm just going to pull those. Sienna brown and sand. Okay, so with the potato it's slightly more, slightly more technical let's say because we need to sort of put in a little bit of pattern on that potato. We need to give it a bit of texture because obviously at the moment it's basically an oval with a few circles on it, let's be honest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do um, oh, the whole thing in the ginger root colour first of all. Very nice light layer, nothing too heavy, otherwise we're not going to have any room to play with on the tooth of this paper. Okay, so when you've got a layer of ginger root on, we're going to take this uh, sienna brown and we're going to use it very lightly and very sparingly just to create some texture on this potato. So I'm barely even touching the paper whatsoever because this is a very rich brown. So we don't want to put too much on there. We just want sort of the look of texture. And again, no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting this. I'm just sort of randomly going around those circles and pulling it in different directions just giving it a little bit of character. And 
once you've got something that's looking a little bit like this, you're on the right track. So we're going to come in now with the sand colour. Now this sand colour is a quite a bright yellowy gold colour so we just want to be careful that we don't put too much on there but putting that first layer down of ginger root really will uh, mute this colour quite a lot which is why we did that. Um, if you just put sand down on its own it is very very bright. So that's another tip for you when you're colouring. If you do want to mute a colour a little bit uh, rather than have it too vibrant you can always put a layer of a lighter colour down or even a layer of white down just to mute that out a little bit. So we're using the sand just to go over all of the sienna brown that we've put down and really sort of embed it into the potato rather than it looking like um, a top layer of something on the potato we want it to look as if it's within the skin of the potato so we're just pushing down all of that sienna brown we don't want to lose it though so just be careful and we're also giving the potato a little bit of color as well once you've got something like that you can come back in finally with your ginger root and cover any areas that are still looking a little bit um, toothy or just not completely burnished and it's very very simple but that is pretty much how to colour a realistic potato now you can go in into these little circles if you like it obviously it depends how the illustrator has drawn the potatoes on your particular colouring book that you're using but on this we have some little circles so I've just put a little bit of sienna brown in there just to deepen that circle make it look a bit like a pit in the surface of the potato but there we are very very simple easy way to colour a potato now moving on we have onions and for this we need terracotta, burnt ochre, seashell pink and sand. So I've got seashell pink, we've already got the sand colour, we just need terracotta and burnt ochre. Here we are. Okay so we're going to start at the bottom of the onion with our darkest colour which is the terracotta and we're going to follow these curved lines at the bottom. So we're going to be curving this way on this side and this way on this side just to make it look a bit rounder. Not pushing our pencil down too hard, we are leaving a nice blurred edge for the next colour which is the burnt ochre. Now straight over the top of that terracotta and using the same sort of strokes up and out into the rest of the onion to about that point. When we've done that we get our next colour which is the sand and you'll see just how bright this sand colour is now that we're on the white paper without that ginger root colour to mute it. It is very very bright. And again, we are blending into the burnt ochre and up just towards the top point of the onion where we're going to get our seashell pink. And fill in the rest. Now, just like we did with the ginger root, you can use the seashell pink just to dull out that sand colour a little bit. And if you find or you feel that you might have gone too far with your browns at the bottom, you can go over that with the sand or the seashell pink and it will just brighten and lift it up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that terracotta again and we're going to redefine those lines at the bottom. And with the burnt ochre just carrying those up, those lines, because onions do have lines all over the skin so we can carry that on as we go up the onion and that just gives it a bit of texture to the skin. You can then just put a few touches of dark colour in the top stem of the onion at the top and blur it all out with the seashell pink. 
Now it's up to you whether you want to put a white gel pen highlight on the surface of the onion because some onions are very matte and some do have a shine to the skin so it's totally up to you but the biggest point about the onion is to try and make sure that you've got those lines showing and don't make it too dark so again if you're not happy you can go over it with that sand colour lighten it up and then re-add all of the lines in with the burnt ochre There we go, that is how to colour an onion. Now next up we've got peas in a pod. And for this one we need apple green, chartreuse, that's for the peas, and olive green and lime peel for the pod. So I know that we've got olive green and apple green out already. So I just need the chartreuse and the lime peel colours. So we'll start off with the peas. So the apple green and the chartreuse for the individual peas. Very, very simple. We're just doing that good old C shape around the left hand side of each pea. And then with our lighter colour, which is the chartreuse, we're just filling in the rest. So all that C shape does for us is just give us a bit of shadow on one side so that it doesn't look flat on the page, it looks like it's got dimension, it looks like it's curving and that it's got some shadow to it. Okay, and for the pod itself, the olive green and the lime peel. So the olive green is obviously the darkest of the two colours, so that's going to be our shadow colour. We're just going to add bit to the inner sort of edge of this top area, making sure that we blur it out to leave room for the lime peel. And just a little bit on the inner edge of the bottom there. Then with the lime peel going straight over the top of it and out to colour the rest. So that just makes it look a little bit darker uh, than the peas as a piece Pod skin usually does look a little bit darker. And for this top bit here, this little hat, we're just going to use our olive green just to go over that. So really simple and very, very quick how to do podded peas. Now I'll just move the sheet up again for the last three vegetables on the sheet, which are mushrooms, carrots and peppers. Okay, so for mushrooms you're going to need to crack out your uh, French greys. So we need 10% French grey, we need 30% and also the 70% French grey, which has disappeared. 10, 30, can't find my 70, oh here it is, 70% French grey, there goes my sharpener, <laughs> um, and espresso. So we've got all of our different colours of greys here. These are very warm greys, warmer than actual warm grey and a little bit browner as well, which is perfect tone for mushrooms. So we're going to start off with our darkest French grey, which was the 70%. And we're going to go in here at the bottom of this mushroom, just this bottom line here and make a little sort of L shape there and then a little touch of it in this corner. We're also going to go around this top bit here and around the edge of this the head of the mushroom. Really hope I haven't broken my sharpener. <laughs> okay. The next one is the 30% French grey, which we're just blending into that very first colour that we've put down, so it's not so harsh. 
and pulling it out into more of the mushroom. Exactly the same over these different points. So it's looking a little bit more blended already. Then we've got our 10% French grey, which is going to be the colour that we use for the rest of the mushroom. So you can colour pretty much everything now with that colour. You can also use this lightest colour to just smooth out any of the previous colours. It's already looking quite 3D, but just to up that contrast a little bit, we'll go in with the espresso and use it very, very sparingly to give a little bit more definition to these dark areas. Again, if you go too far with it, too heavy with it, you just build up those different colour layers back again. And each lighter colour that you put on is going to sort of mute out the colour that you put down before that. Just need a little bit of espresso in that corner there. And so we're now onto the 30% French grey. And just keep working at it until you think that it looks smooth and uh, mushroom-like. Lastly, the 10% French grey to blend everything. And that is the mushroom. Now to do this sort of sliced mushroom, the cross section of the mushroom, it's pretty much the same thing. So darkest one, uh, darkest of the French grey is the 70%. It's going straight across there like that and this area maybe will be in a bit of shadow and also these sort of holes in the mushroom and maybe a little bit of shadow down here as well so next colour 30% French grey dragging that 70% out a little bit more And then the 10% French grey for the rest. So I'm just going to bring that 30% out slightly more into the mushroom so that it's not too very, very, very pale with the 10% uh, French grey. using 70% French grey just very very slightly to create a bit of a thicker shadow and if you want to the espresso just to define some of the areas of shadow as well And that's basically it. Now if you wanted to, you could just take that French grey, the darkest one, the 70, just do a few little lines up it like that, just to show a bit of texture on the mushroom. And that's that. So second to last one is the carrot. And for this, we need mineral orange, goldenrod, yellowed orange, and orange. And luckily they're all together in my pencil case, which makes it easier. Okay, so mineral orange is the dullest, the darkest of the colours. And we're going to be colouring the bottom of this carrot, this bottom edge, with the mineral orange. Then we have the golden rod. And 
another layer and just pulling that first colour out. Then we have the yellowed orange. Let's just do a little bit more goldenrod. There we go. So the yellowed orange to complete the carrot. And you can go back in with the three just to deepen up any shadows and things. And then you could just leave it like that, but if you want it to be a bit more of an orangey carrot, you can go in and add a layer of orange over the top and that just brightens the carrot up a little bit more. To be honest, it just depends on personal preference. You could just leave it with those first three colors. As long as you've got a good shadow at the bottom going up to the lightest, which is the yellowed orange, this shouldn't be a problem. It just depends on your preference. So you can use, if you wanted to, some grass green and some spring green. Um, yeah, let's do that for the <clears throat> leaves of the carrot. So we've got grass green and spring green. Just put in the darker of the two, the grass green, just up into the leaves a little bit like that and then the spring green just to fill everything else in. And we've got really nice, bright, vibrant carrot. Okay, now for the last vegetable, the pepper, I'm going to be doing three different types, or three different colors rather, of pepper. So we're going to have crimson red and poppy red. So crimson red and poppy. And for the pepper, we're going to be just following all the contours of the lines that is down already for us. So each line, we're just going to frame it in the crimson red. Super, super simple. And also just don't forget to bring in that little bit of feathered color for the next to blend into. Just like that, which is the poppy red. Now you will also need your white on this for the highlight because again peppers are quite shiny so colouring with your poppy red and just leaving a little stripe down the middle of each section so the poppy red blends right into the crimson red always leaving room <coughs> excuse me for the white pencil and once you've got something that looks like that. You can whip out that white pencil again. Where is it? It's here. And make sure it's nice and clean. <clears throat> and just like we did with the aubergine and the tomato, the white pencil, it just pulls in the poppy red, but it's loads lighter and it gives that look of a shine So just keep burnishing it with the white until you're happy that it looks smooth enough. Again, you can go in, add your colours back in if they've been sort of muted too much. you'll end up with a really cute shiny looking pepper and you can just put any old green on that stalk it doesn't really matter uh, let's just stick let's just stick the olive green on it why not okay next pepper is Spanish orange and canary yellow so all of these peppers just have two colors and a white so really really easy so Spanish orange and canary yellow following exactly the same method as we did before so we're using the darkest spanish orange to outline the different segments of the pepper I'm going to leave our blurry edge for the canary yellow use the canary yellow to blend out the harsh line of the, of the uh, Spanish orange 
and leaving that white area in the centre for the highlight. So again, making sure there's no red left on this white. And just burnishing it in. It could not get any easier and quicker than this. And if you are colouring a book that's got lots of fruit and vegetables in it, you don't want it to take a lifetime to colour one piece uh, of food. So very, very quick and simple, something like that. Again, go back in with your colours if you want to raise the vibrancy a little bit more, the contrast. There we go, let's use our olive green for this stalk. And then finally we have the green pepper which I'm going to use the Prussian green and the apple green. So we already have our apple green out here. Prussian green is obviously the darkest of the two so that's going to be our border colour. And then the apple green blending right into that Prussian green so we've got a nice seamless blend. Leaving our white area. Making sure that the yellow is all off of our white pencil. blurring that highlight I'm going to go back in and make sure we've got some definite apple green showing there that's going to be our main pepper colour got a lot of darkness with the Prussian a lot of shadow so do make sure that you've got a nice amount of your apple green in there as well. And again, just blurring it out. Pop in with our olive green for finishing off this stalk. And there we have it. So you've learned today how to colour nine different vegetables in my particular style. Really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you're looking forward to the third and final video with the comfort foods. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed it. If you do like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. That is the number one biggest thing that you can do to help me and my channel. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to download your practice sheet in the comments below in the link description thingy bob. Um, and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.